Welcome. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about uh, factoring quadratic expressions. Uh, really, this is a primer. Not all of them are going to be quadratic expressions. I'm just going to talk about factoring out common factors. So here we go. Just do a few quick ones and we're finished. So I want to factor out the common factor of each expression. I need to see what number all of the uh, coefficients have in common. And I can do that by doing a factor list for them if I want. So I need to do for 60, 1 and 60, 2 and 30, 3 and 20, uh, 4 and 15, 6 and 10. Uh, for 70, 1 and 70, 2 and 35, 3 I'm pretty sure doesn't work, 4 doesn't work, 70 divided by 5 is 14, 70 divided by 7 is 7 and 10, 8 doesn't work, 9 doesn't work, and 10 of course will be 1, 10, 2, 5, and that's it. Now I need to find the greatest common factor so they all have a 10 in them. And for me, the best move always is to start out to see if the 10, the smallest number, goes into the big ones, which in this case it would have. It would have been way easier for me to do it that way. And sort of uh, a lot of times the numbers that you have to pull this type of stuff out are just numbers on the multiplication sets. So uh, in this case, 10 times 1, 6, and 7. So I'm going to pull that 10 out front. And then essentially, I'm just, uh, I need to see if any of the, I can pull out any variables, and I can't here. So I'm going to divide everything by 10. That's what I'm doing to get my final answer. So 60 divided by 10 is 6. The a squared has to stay. Um, 70 divided by 10 is minus 7. And uh, negative 10 divided by 10 is negative 1. So I end up with 10 times the quantity 6a squared minus 7a, I should say, minus 1. And if I needed to check the answer, I could just go back and do distributive property. So essentially, factoring is reverse distributive property. So that's it for that one. Let's look at another one very quickly. Um, so in this case, it says I have 14, 14 and 2. Well, the smallest number here is 2. It goes into 14. So I'm going to factor that out to the front. So 2 goes out front. I need to also take a look to see if I have any common variables. I do not. So that's good. So I'm dividing all these by 2. Uh, 14 divided by 2 is 7 plus 7m and then negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1 so negative 1m to the third power and if I wanted to have it in some sort of uh, almost close to a nice standard look I could always sort of flip those numbers around a little bit to give me that descending exponent thing that some people look for but there it is, you're just pulling out things that they have in common, and that's pretty much it for uh, factoring out common factors. So, uh, this is tagged on to the end, you'll see a little break in the video, is because I thought this part was already on here. Apparently not. Um, there are cases in which you can use a variable as a greatest common factor. I mean, you don't have to pull out just a number. You could deal with the exponents. So like in this case, you can't, there's no number that goes into all of those, except for one, and what's the point of that? So I'm going to look to see if I can pop out a variable. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's x to the 10th. And I'm just going to do this to show you, uh, to make a point about how much you're actually allowed to factor out. 6. Now, I can't take t x to the 10th away because there's only 5 in this set so that doesn't work. The most that I could take out is x to the 5th because I just take out whatever they have in common. Um, so x to the 5th comes out in the front and I could make it negative x to the 5th and change all the signs so that first sign would be positive but I don't really feel all that motivated to do it. You just can do it. So choose your own adventure I guess is the moral of that story. Um, so I'm left with negative 8x to the 1, 2, 3, Four, five, and of course you could just subtract. I mean, that's the you're really doing a division here, so you'd be doing like that. So uh, the big brothers are dividing, and the little brothers are subtracting. So ten minus five is five. You can sort of organize that however you best fit your brain, but that's what I'm doing. In the next one, um, I'd have three left over. And the next one, I'd have one left over, and then finally I'd end up with my eight. And the nice thing is I can actually check my answer. 
see, works out. Um, so that's one where you just pull out the single variable. Sometimes you'll pull out both. I think this is one where that's the case, yes. So I have k to the ninth, k to the fifth, k to the fourth, and k to the third. The spoiler alert is you can just pull out the smallest one. That's the most you can pull out of any of them if they all have one. You can't factor out a, a variable that doesn't exist in all the terms. If this was just six, there's nothing I could do. I can't factor out, but I can here. So I'm going to factor out k to the third. And three goes into all these numbers. So I'm going to factor out three as well. So what I'm really doing in the first set and I'm not going to show you this for all of them, I'm just showing you for one. Negative uh, 15, so the, the coefficients of the big brothers, quote unquote, are, are dividing. So negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. And then I'm subtracting the exponents, so k to the 6. And then 4k squared, it's a significant drop. It goes from ninth to the fifth power. Um, I don't know why I thought to bring that up, but I just did. 2 and k plus 8. I'm going to check my answer to make sure. I'm not missing anything. I'm shooting this part kind of early in the morning, so sometimes I'm not exactly on my game. So there we go. And then finally, the final option is just you pull out more than one variable. I mean, you can pull out as many, er, factor out anyway, as many variables as you're allowed to factor out. In this case, I have an M and an N in all the terms. So I'm dealing with this is my first term, and I'll just put the N's over here for it. And looking in a comparison state, I can only pull out or factor out the M and then an N, and then I can see what's left over. Also, um, 2 goes into all of these, so I'm going to end up pulling out 2 m n and if you want to make these little charts for yourself it's just like a little reminder it's kind of helpful so I end up with negative 2 because it's 4 divided by 2 and then I'm left with m squared and then n you probably won't need to do this part later but right now it's really easy for me to look uh, to see that okay that's what's left over there's an m left over in the next term and not an n so I just had to make sure I do the 5 part and then the m is left over and then in my final set, uh, it's 8, and that's it. I'm going to check the answer and I'll be done. Yep, occasionally I miss them, and I don't want to show you something that's incorrectly done because I'm making some minor mistake. But anyway, that's it. You can factor out variables as well as numbers, so just be careful. And remember, when you factor out a numeric factor, you're doing a division with the coefficients. And when you're doing, uh, you're factoring out a variable, you want to make sure that you're doing just a subtraction when you're working with those exponents. So that's it.